You are looking at Hawkeye, designed by Aiden Dominguez, who is one of the grand prize winners from this year's designer contest. As his reward for winning this contest, Aiden will receive a custom trophy featuring his name and a picture of Hawkeye on it. And you can see I've also designed a custom template for this plane that is of course available to Aiden, but it is also available to all of my patrons on patreon.com slash foldable flight. So if you would like to fold a plane that looks just like this one, head over there and check that out. There are over 90 templates to choose from for just $4 a month. Now I should mention that our book is currently on sale. If you head over to foldableflight.com and order from us there, you will get a free bonus template pack along with your order of the book. So if you're thinking you'd like my book anytime soon, now is the best time to get it. And with that, let's get back to the video. Now you already know Hawkeye looks absolutely amazing with those diamond shaped wings, the fact that there are four of them, a swept back tail, this thing just looks sick. Now, not only that, but it actually flies very well too. It can fly over 100 feet and it's an intermediate difficulty plane. So it's really not that hard to fold either. And it's rare that you get that combination of a plane that looks amazing, flies really well, and isn't even that hard to fold. So let's see it in action and then I'll teach you how to make it. Three, two, one, go. All you will need in order to fold Hawkeye is a square sheet of paper. I'm using a really thin Kami here, but you could use something thicker than that. And in fact, it will fly best with something like 90 GSM or 24 pound paper. If your paper is too colored like mine is, you're actually going to want to begin with your colored side down. And we're going to start with it in this position here and fold the top point down to this bottom point. When you do this, your crease should go right through each of your outer points here. Okay, now I'm actually going to fold it in half, making a center crease that goes right through this point. And now I can stand this up and squash fold this whole triangular flap, just kind of fanning it open and pushing on this point here, bringing this point down to this point there. And then flattening these outer creases here. Okay, now we can flip the paper over, stand this triangular flap up and we'll squash fold this as well. Okay. I'm going to now fold this point up to the top point and I'm just making a pinch crease here. And now I'll fold the top point to that pinch crease. And I'll fold the top point to that pinch crease, making just another pinch crease there. And I'm going to highlight, we have three pinch creases here. I'll highlight all of those. We're going to be using two of these as references later. Now let's go ahead and open our paper up back into this position here. And I'm going to fold this point into the center, landing it right along that crease that is here. I'll do the same exact thing on the other side. Your paper should look like this, and now we can collapse it back into this position. 
just like that. Okay, it should look like this on that side, but we're looking at it from here. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold this edge into the center. Just like that. I'll do the same thing here. And now let's go ahead and we'll rotate it into this position and pull this top triangle down right along the edge of these layers. And then reverse that triangle to go behind them. Just like that. Rotate it back into this position and now fold these edges over those edges. Going almost all the way to the center crease. Just like that. Do the same thing over here. And your plane should look like this. Now, I'm going to open this up and let you see. Here we have the three pinch creases. I'm positioning the nose of my plane on the right. This reference, or this pinch crease rather, is not a reference. You don't need to pay attention to that one. We're looking at the two that are closer together. And I'm going to close up this here. Basically, I want to fold my wings out. And one of my reference points here is this, cre or this point. And then the other reference are these two creases. Basically, you can make your fuselage as large or small as you want here, where the closer you make your fold to this crease here, it gets smaller. The closer you make it to that one, it gets bigger. I like it to be a little closer to this left one rather than the front one. And that lets the fuselage be just a little bigger, more prominent. So again, yours doesn't have to exactly match mine, but if you want yours to match mine, mine's close to the center, but a little closer to this one here. And once you do one side, again, the crease is going to this point down here. Once you do one side, you just fold the other side to match. Okay, let's go ahead and open our left side up. And I want to make a crease now only to the center here. I'm pulling and making a crease right along this edge. So you can see I'm kind of rolling this in, controlling those layers. I want my crease to go right along that edge, but only to my center crease here. So if I open that up, you can see where I made that crease. And now I'll open it and do the same thing on the other side. So I position it like this. Then I pull right over, try to control that nicely, and crease just to the center. And you can see now I've made those creases. Let's position it like this, flip it over, and you can see we're ready to jet fold. I basically just push in on the center a little bit as I bring those sides together. And I will collapse it into this position here. Now we'll pull our wings up right along this edge here. Do the same exact thing on the other side. And your plane should look like this. And you can see we're getting close, but we need to make our tail fin. Now there is a reference point for the tail fin if you want. It's right here. And what that means is when we kind of pop this to reverse this layer, you can try and pull this forward exactly to where this little mountain aims for that point there. But honestly, that is really not crucial. The thing you want to pay attention to when you're making this fin, you can really make it a variety of sizes, but you want to make sure that this back edge is behind this point right there. You can see I could swing that forward. I want it to slope back and we're going to do a step that you'll see in just a second why we need that, but you should have a little space between this point 
and the back of your fin there. That's the really important thing as you decide on the size of your fin. And then we can go ahead and crease that. Now here you will see why we did that. I'm going to grab the back edge of the fin and in fact you can see I've got both layers here and I'm folding from this point right at the top of the fin down to this point right at the back of the fuselage of the plane and on through to the bottom. Okay, make that nice and flat. And then I'll open that up. This right side is already in position now to tuck that into the inside of the fin, but I'm going to need to reverse the crease on this side to tuck those in. Just like this. And now you can see we have a nice swept back tail to the plane. Now we're ready to tuck these layers, these two layers right here, up into the fuselage of the plane. So it's almost like we're folding them at a 45 degree angle or so. The challenge is you're tucking them all the way up as far as they'll go, but this little pocket you have here is in your way. So I'm going to open that up reach in and fold that up as far as those layers will allow me to fold them. Just wrapping one right around the other, just like that. And you can see I'm folding them up as far as they'll go. And then pressing that flat. And you can see that's locking the back together. And then we're going to fold this section up into here, just like this. Now we folded the flaps towards the right side of the plane in the first step, and here we will fold this to the left side of the plane. Just like that. Crease all of that nicely, and that locks the plane together. And now all we have left to do is to set the angles of our wings. So this is something you can definitely experiment with and it will change the behavior of the plane, but just start with it in this kind of slight X pattern here and see how that flies for you. If it's diving down, which is somewhat unlikely, you can bend the back edges up slightly. If it's spiraling counterclockwise, you can bend the rudder to the right slightly or bend the back wing here up slightly. If it's spiraling in the opposite direction, you would bend the rudder to the left slightly or a wing up on this side. And with that, good luck flying your plane. Thank you so much to all of my patrons who are supporting this channel and making these videos possible. I'm now releasing a new tier where you can become the pilot of your favorite foldable flight paper airplane and your name will appear next to the paper airplane you choose in each of my YouTube videos.